but as you can see single grained how jollof should be guten appetit how are you doing welcome to my channel my name is phoebe and this is the phoebe way i'm going to show you how i make jollof the phoebe way yes my special carrot jollof recipe this recipe was taught to me by my mom and i've made it my own i've added a few twists here and there you're going to see this along the video and i i don't like eating the same thing every day so Whenever I make jollof, I try to change it up a bit. So maybe the first day I just eat the jollof with maybe chicken. The next day I fry it with vegetables. So normally I eat fried jollof a lot. And on this, I do not want to um, have a lot of oil in my food. I just add the vegetables straight into the pot of jollof before I take it off the fire. So whilst it's still hot and it's still cooking, that's what I normally do, right? Christmas around the corner, maybe you'll be expecting visitors. Maybe you'll be receiving visitors. Well, not many of us will be doing that thanks to COVID. But nonetheless, if you're still celebrating with your own family, you can switch things up a bit, show them a new kind of jollof, how to enjoy jollof. And if you're a beginner, this is your first time cooking jollof, this video is perfect for you because I explain things step by step, okay? It's foolproof. It will work. That's it. It will work. Yes. And how I serve my jollof, shrimps, sometimes with beef, but always with vegetables. I love veggies. I love, love, love veggies. So I worked with what I had at home and I cook for myself today and also for work tomorrow because I still always have a bit of extra. So um, yeah, and I'm going to make a new jollof on Thursday on, or on Friday, depends on when the family will come over. So yes, guys, this is the intro. Enjoy the recipe. Let me know what you think. Comment below, like, share. Let everybody know about this special jollof recipe, okay? And if you watched my video with Sandra, where Sandra tried Ghana Jollof for the first time, she was like, Nigeria is still learning because Ghanaians, we add different spices to our Jollof. Well, this is the video for you. So if you're a Nigerian and you're like, how could she say Ghana Jollof is better than Nigerian Jollof? Chelu, calm down. Kudan, Kudan. Just watch the video to the end and let me know what you think, if you agree with Sandra or not. <laughs> but yes. And of course, I'm, I can't even say Nigeria Jollof better than Nigeria Jollof, but this recipe is given to me by my mom, and she showed, she she follows the Ghanaian recipe this time around and makes it her own as well. So it's mainly Ghanaian, and yes, and I'm Nigerian too, but this recipe is Ghanaian, and it works, it bangs, it is what it is. Enjoy the recipe, guys. So these are our ingredients for the Jollof. As I said, this Jollof is going to be a special one, so we have different ingredients main part is the rice tomato paste concentrated tomato paste shrimp powder grounded crayfish grounded shrimps i have some beef i have some shrimps spiced already i spiced them last night and put them in the fridge and then i have bell peppers or paprika i have all three colors Carrots, it's going to make this different. We have some ginger peeled, some garlic, um, some pepper, just one, because this is really spicy. I got this from the African shop. It's so spicy, guys. I didn't play with this. And then some onions, um, diced and sliced. I'm going to use some of this, um, the pepper, the ginger, the onion, and the garlic to spice the meat. Um, after blending th this and then of course we need some salt some spices. Let me add that real quick So These are the vegetables we'll be needing the carrots are very important. They are um, peeled the carrots are very important. They've been peeled and washed and Some bell peppers later, you know what I'm going to do with them and then the habanero and ginger garlic cloves and some spices i use curry i'm going to use cardamom for the first time this time around for something else but i'll show you i'll show you in a bit thyme and rosemary all right let's get started guys so i'm going to add the pepper. I'm going to cut the
ginger. The diced onions. And all of the garlic. Okay. So these are whole cloves. Don't take too many because if you do, it's going to overpower. So just a few, as you can see, just a few so it doesn't overpower the aroma. Everything has to be balanced. That's actually cooking. Everything should be balanced. So this is our beef. And I'm going to add some of the carrots to it because I want to make sure that the carrot is pre-boiled, super boiled before I add it to the stew because I need to blend that as well. And then I'll go ahead and add some of the salsa mix that I just blended. Not too much, just a bit. To cover it up, we'll use the rest for the stew. And then don't forget we we'll need our spice. So the meat is going to cook for a bit, about 30 minutes or so. So it's soft to you. Some people love, like their meats, like something want them to be able to chew their meat. That it wouldn't be my household. If you like it a bit soft, so and I'm cooking just for myself today. I will take the rest to work for lunch tomorrow. So I'm not actually going to cook a lot because on Thursday or Friday, I'll be cooking in a bigger pan, a bigger plan for the whole family. And the stew is something you really need to be mindful of. And because I need the carrots to cook a bit, I'm just going to go ahead and let the carrots or the meat cook for some 10 to 15 minutes before I start with the stew simply because I need the carrots to be ready by the time I start so I don't have to wait for too long. So as I'm waiting for the meat and carrot to get done, I just chop down my veggies and now we can actually start. So this is our pre-boiled carrots. You can see it's really well drenched in the spices and it's pretty hot so I'm going to go ahead and blend it as well together with the together with this that we had so this is the blended carrots with the salsa sauce I wanted it to be this smooth so here we go we're just going to start with our stew. I've added the oil and then I didn't use much. It looks much in the pot, but it was just maybe a fourth or a quarter of this, right? And I'm going to fry the onions too. I think I would do it with more onions, but today I'm in a hurry. I'm just, I don't feel like cutting onions anymore, so I'm just going to go ahead. So now I know the oil is hot, and I'm going to add oil is hot, so I'm going to add the concentrated tomato paste. Add the rest. The reason why you need lots of the concentrated tomato paste is obviously because of the color. It's red and that is going to contribute to the color of your jello basically. That's the reason why I add it. Okay. We have most of it. 
Just leave it in there for two minutes. I'm going to use a lower heat because once the the mix, the carrots, pepper, ginger, garlic mix goes in with the cloves, the stew will start being aggressive. I always say it's aggressive. So. Oh, it smells so good. We're going to go ahead and get as much as I can out. And this stew is basically the basis for any kind of Ghanaian stew. Um, if you want to make egg stew, egg sauce, instead of using the tomatoes, once you have your concentrated tomato paste, you can use carrots and other veggies instead. Sometimes I mix the carrots with paprika, the bell peppers. Sometimes I do that. So. So I've rinsed this out. I'm just going to go ahead and add that. Yeah, I rinsed out the tomato paste as well. So at this point, it's time to spice. We're going to use the almighty crayfish or shrimp powder. I think that should be enough. And then next step, some sign. Some curry. The curry is going to give the jollof a nice flavor. Don't do without curry. I don't even have much left, but you only live once. I'll go to the shop before Christmas to get another one for my Christmas jollof. And then some seasoning. everything mix well and I'm just going to allow the, the stew to do its thing the trick about jollof is that you need to give the stew time in fancy we say or them at stew no more chill so now that it has everything it needs I'm not even going to taste it now I'll taste it when there's enough oil on the surface and you know yes it's well fried so I'm just going to leave it for some minutes I'll, be, I'll keep checking like every five minutes and because of this I'm going to close it okay not fully closed but I don't need any accidents in the kitchen already the taste is good I said I wouldn't taste it but mm. all right so I'm going to leave it and come back later to check on it So after 10 minutes, I'm just going to check if the salt content is enough. Mm -hmm. You could do with some more salt and some more of the shrimp powder. Just a little bit. a little bit more salt because of the rice so I'm going to leave it like this for the next 10 minutes this is our beef the steamed beef I'm going to air fry this till it's crisp and then I'll add it to the jollof later when it's done Now jollof is all about flavor, so I'm going to add these bay leaves 
into the stew so it can just absorb the beautiful aroma of the bay leaf. I nearly forgot that. This is our beet stock. Normally, I would add it to the stew now, but it's going to take a longer while for the stew to be done. Or oh, I don't want the stew to be too liquidy, so I'm just going to add it to the rice later and use this as the liquid for the rice instead of regular water. So this is how thick the stew is now after 10 minutes or 5 to 10 minutes. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the rice. This is long, extra long grain basmati, extra long grain. But I'm not too sure about whether the stew would cover the rice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the stew out. Just just to be on the safer side. So if I need more stew, I can just go ahead and add Because I don't want to cook too much rice as I said it's just for today and tomorrow highest so there we go So the stew would have been too much. That's good, I took some out. Now, the trick to having a jollof coming out starts with how much liquid you put in. You can see this jollof is quite rich in stew. So I'll add just a little bit of rice, just half cup of rice to it because I want to use all of my stock. So those who are asking in the other video, will it work? Will it work? Will it work? With just carrots, yes, as you can see, it does work. So now, I'm going to add the stock instead of regular water. Because you need 1.5 times the amount of rice that you have. So the rice should just be well covered and just a little bit more. I'm going to give it a little bit more heat. So this is how it should be. If we should need more liquid, we're just going to add this to you instead. And close it as fast as you can because the jollof needs vapor to work. So this is how far we have come. I'm not even going to do much so it can slowly cook with the heat that it I want to say thank you to my neighbor because I didn't have any olive oil. I didn't even know. I didn't know I didn't have olive oil, but they brought me a whole pack. So thank you. 
Now, I can't say what this Alufil does, but all I know is that it helps keep the vapor in. So all I know is it helps keep the vapor in as you are cooking. And yes, so the jollof just needs low heat and some time to cook. So after about, I think about 30, 20, 25 minutes on low heat, this is how our jollof looks. We still have some single grains in there that we still need to get cooked, but the loaf not really right. So as I'm waiting for the jollof to totally finish, I'm going to start with the side, um, the new way I make it. So move to this pan. Start the fire. And we'll start with the shrimp first. For the shrimps. A little bit of oil for the shrimps to be able to fry properly. Um, this is olive oil, so you don't need it to heat up too much. So I've added the shrimp now. You can probably see or hopefully see it's already spiced my mom spiced this for me because we're supposed to cook together oh that's a heart do you see that that's a heart <laughs> so i've added the shrimp now As you can probably see or hopefully see it's already spiced my mom spiced this for me because we're supposed to cook together. Oh, that's a heart. Do you see that? That's a heart. <laughs> so we leave the shrimp to fry. So you know your shrimps are done when they are curled up. And I'm going to take them out because I don't like my shrimp to feel so soft. I want them to have, to, I want to feel something when I bite into them. I want them to be, um, I don't know how to explain it. Let's see, I'm talking this time, you know. This next to let shake or the next to rice is, I don't know how to explain it in English, but I want it to feel like something when I'm. biting into it. Let's leave it for a minute more. So since the the shrimps are done, I'm going to taking them out. And the next thing would be the carrots. Let it fry for a bit because, as you know, carrots can be a bit stubborn. I have these two onions left, so I'm going to add that as well. Now, as the color of the carrots have changed, I know they're a bit softer. I don't want them to be too soft. Yellow paprika, there. Yeah. Some red and some green. Red, gold, green, Ghana, the black star. <laughs> so this is Ghana the love. You can't do without all these colors, you know. And you've probably seen that I didn't use everything. Just the rest is for the part two of 
our serving. This, the shrimps were really spiced with um, salt and all of that and also some white pepper. I'm just going to go ahead and um, add that and then taste later because it still has some sauce in it. Mix everything together. And this is where I add my latest favorite spice, cardamom. I didn't know I could add it to so many things, but I just add a little, just a little bit. And you can also make fried rice with this. The only difference is that you add garlic in the beginning. And yeah. So now I'm going to test the salt to see if you have enough salt in here. Mm -hmm. The salt is all right. This is how our jalop is looking. I'm going to take some of the jalop out. We'll have to come back with my phone camera because the camera has given up on us. So basically, we keep mixing. This is part one. This is the fried jello with shrimp. All right. Here we take out the bay leaves as we see it. I just add, let me take out this daily. So, on this side, I just add the deep fried or air fried crisp um, meat chunks with the rest of the veggies. So you can either fry or you can just go ahead and add it as it is here. You can see it's grainy. It is not clumped together. And the trick is use less water and more stew or more thicker sauce and also the alu foil yes so this is the first variant with this you can cover it so the veggies can get a bit softer if you want i'm just going to cover this up and this is ready i'm currently waiting for the plantain to get done as well so i can have dinner and the rest is going to be meal prep for the rest of the week till Christmas.
So as you can see, single grained, how jollof should be. Guten Appetit.